Hello and welcome to F1 Livery Histories, the channel where we take a look back at the different paint jobs, racing trims and sponsor decals adopted by respective Formula 1 teams throughout the eras. Today we'll be profiling a team which achieved intermediate successes at Grand Prix level, yet managed to overcome both controversy and adversity during its 8 year stint in Formula 1, on occasion outperforming even its wealthiest of rivals, LaRousse. The LaRousse Formula 1 team was founded in 1987 as LaRousse and Calmel by former Renault sport boss and team principal of the factory Renault Formula 1 team, Gerard LaRousse, and primary investor Didier Calmel. Rather than building its own chassis, the team entered an exclusive deal with longtime Formula 1 constructor Lola, which would see LaRousse operating in Formula 1 with Lola built cars on a customer basis. Within months of formation, this new Paris based operation was set for an immediate entry into Formula 1. So begins our retrospective on the complicated dealings of the effervescent LaRousse Formula 1 team. The first Lola car raced by Team LaRousse was the Lola T8730 chassis which was redesignated by the team as the LaRousse LC87 and outfitted with naturally aspirated Ford power. Tyres and fuel were supplied to the team by Goodyear and BP. The team made its Formula 1 debut at the 1987 San Marino Grand Prix, with Philippe Elio piloting a singular entry. Late in the season the team would expand to a two-car operation, with Yannick Dalmas joining Elio on driving duties. From the outset, LaRousse proved to be a colourful team, as evidenced by their car's livery, which featured a backdrop shade of blue, the national racing colour of France, accented by a margin of red, which surrounded the monocoque. The team's sponsors included Hetcher, Seine-Maritime, Hort Normandy, Viel and C, Hewlett-Packard, Gevelo, and major sponsors, security systems company, Elcron, which appeared primarily on the rear wing and sides of the vehicle. The same livery was retained the following year for the LC88, as the team attracted a band of new French sponsors, including human resources company Adia, as well as chemical and pharmaceutical company Ron Poilink. The team also welcomed aboard cigarette company Camel as sponsors, which signalled the arrival of Camel's distinctive brand of yellow to the top of the car. Leading into the 1989 season, the team's co-founder Didier Calmel was arrested for murder, prompting his exodus from the team, which soon thereafter became simply known as Equipe La Russe. The team pressed on with the Lamborghini V12 powered LC88B before introducing the all new LC89. Green was first introduced to delivery by virtue of fuel supplier BP, which was now seen more vividly on both the car's engine case and the nose cone. In the absence of Elkron, Ron Polink was now seen occupying the car's rear wing. The team's livery also employed a varied collection of shapes, arranged on the car in a contemporary fashion. This livery concept was further explored in 1990, as the team ran with the LC89B and LC90 chassis. Camel had exited the team, which saw US IT company Unisys now appearing on the car's airbox. Japanese electronics brand Toshiba assumed space on the car's rear wing, while smaller sponsors such as Spex, Toa, Geo, and TDK were also visible. 1990 also saw Japanese communications company Espo briefly purchase an interest in the team, securing a position on the car's side pods. At the 1990 Japanese Grand Prix, local driver Aguri Suzuki claimed LaRousse their first and only podium position by finishing in third place. This podium finish would also prove to be the one and only podium registered by a Lamborghini powered car in Formula 1. Suzuki and his teammate Eric Bernard would steer LaRousse to sixth position in the constructors' standings in 1990 capping off LaRousse's most successful Formula 1 season. However, by the end of the season, LaRousse would lose the support of both Lamborghini and primary investors Espo. 1991 would mark the team's return to Ford engines, as LaRousse competed with the LC91, the final Lola-built LaRousse chassis. Along with the addition of new sponsors Central Park, the team's livery went through a series of revitalizations throughout the year, as red, yellow and green were all utilised as offset colours throughout various stages of the season. Despite their colourful appearance on track, LaRousse's financial situation had become rather bleak. On the verge of bankruptcy, LaRousse would receive the lifeline it needed heading into 1992, securing an arrangement with a new investor.
In 1992, the team was officially entered as Venturi LaRousse, as the French automaker purchased a controlling interest in Gerard LaRousse's team. The team fielded the Venturi LC92, designed by Robin Hurd, which once again ran with Lamborghini power. Amidst a flood of changes at managerial level, LaRousse's team livery remained largely the same, as the LC92 came painted in LaRousse's recognised combination of blue, red, yellow and green, present now with Venturi branding. Amongst the team's newly signed sponsors for season 1992 was cigarette brand Cabin, which reintroduced the colour red to the car's airbox. Zent, Hype and Rizla also featured on the car throughout the season. Venturi's association with LaRousse would prove to last only the singular season, as following the 1992 season, Venturi sold their majority shareholding in the team to an investment firm known as the Comstock Group. However, within a few weeks of this announcement, it was revealed that Comstock's president, Klaus Waltz, who had fronted the Comstock company unlawfully under an assumed identity, was wanted by police in multiple countries in connection to several cases of homicide. Subsequently, this turn of events would result in full control of the team once again reverting back to Gerard LaRousse. The LH93, LaRousse's first Formula 1 chassis, came once again outfitted with Lamborghini engines. 1993 also oversaw LaRousse switching to L-Fuels, whilst the team retained their unique and distinctive multicoloured team livery. Charo, Zanussi, Somatic and Ambrosi were all picked up as additional sponsors. However, the team was still struggling without a major financial backer, leading Gerard LaRousse to seek out new investors to keep his team afloat. Heading into 1994, LaRousse landed a deal with multinational consumables corporation Danone, which brought upon a radical new twin livery concept for the Ford-powered LH94, which featured two of the company's sister brands. For the season opener in Brazil, the team debuted a primarily green livery, which promoted the alcohol-free Tortel brand. The livery also featured diagonal elements of yellow and blue, plus additional sponsorship from Speedy, Frank Miller, Eurosport, and cigarette brand Goulois. Throughout the season, the team would alternate between this livery and a red and white checkered livery, which promoted Cronenborg in countries which permitted alcohol advertising. The team's driver lineup fluctuated constantly during the season, as LaRousse brought in a number of pay drivers as the season progressed. Heading into 1995, the team's coffers were once again bare, and so LaRousse explored the possibilities of state funding, as well as the potential of entering an agreement with the French F3000 team, DAMS. However, neither of these opportunities came to action and amidst ongoing legal troubles and debts, LaRousse would remain absent from the Formula 1 grid. And so LaRousse became the latest casualty of the increasing financial demands of Formula 1 racing. In spite of a rapid, almost yearly interchange of primary investors and succumbing to the need to employ numerous pay drivers, LaRousse always remained a respectable and competitive Formula 1 operation, 